Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Joe. Welcome to SNES SNES, SNES recap number one zero eight. Today we're covering Clay Fighters Two Jungle Strike. The God, the Ignition Factor, Full Throttle, All American Racing, and finally Might and Magic Three: The Isle of Terror. Let's get started. First up, Clay Fighter Two Judgment Clay. I didn't really care for Clay Fighter One or Clay Fighter Tournament Edition. It's another clay fighter. I don't... I understand that it's an aesthetic. That it is a choice to make the game look like it looks. I don't care for that choice having been made. It's it's not great. The music was okay. The sound was okay. I do enjoy... I did enjoy the new characters. Like, I'm the octopus guy right here. And I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, otherwise, it's just not a great game. And I don't think it's worth playing. Or paying. It's it's a thumbs down for me. And yeah, just there are so many better fighting games on this console than Clay Fighters, man. Just just awful. Jungle Strike. Uh, so I played Desert Strike, God, so 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 long ago. And I don't remember now. I think I gave it a thumbs down. I think it just felt a little too unwieldy and uncontrollable. Jungle Strike is a continuation. They made three of these. Uh, the last one, I think, is called Urban Strike. This one is weird. So you're fighting a drug lord in South America, but the first five or six levels, which was the entirety of what I was able to play, really, is in Washington, D.C., flying around, escorting the president's limo, killing guys who are trying to bomb, like, national monuments, uh, stopping are catching like criminals out of like drug houses it's really weird the controls were okay it's it's not terrible my argument with it was the precision that you have to shoot with and they shoot the shit out of you like the second you're on screen they're shooting you you only get three lives and um Oh, shit, I haven't seen this game. In... I, I hit stream instead of record. And so I'm streaming this to Twitch. Anyway, hi again, Rubix. <laughs> uh, so I didn't... I gave this game a thumbs down. Uh, there is a cheat code to get like 99 lives or something when you start the game. And that makes the game functionally far better. Because dying isn't such a detriment. Um, because the health in the game, the health pickups are so sparse that it, you know you really have to know where everything is because they'll shoot you the second they're on the edge of the screen and you'll end up getting shot down and i found that very very irritating uh but otherwise it's kind of okay i thumbs it down if you like desert strike almost certainly you like jungle strike give it a try then if you're interested in a helicopter game give that a try Again, I prefer the helicopter attack mode and pilot wings. <laughs> so, that's what that is. Uh, next up, the ignition factor. This game is really interesting. So, you're a fireman going around. I only got through the first two missions. And there are people you have to save, fires to put out. You have your fire hose, your axe. Um, you get these, like, CO2 bombs that put out, like, big chunks of fire first aid kits and you wander around these buildings putting out fires and the job is to rescue a certain number of civilians and once you've done that you know the fire there's a percentage at the top there it's like how much the building's on fire and once it gets high your boss is like hey you have to get out and then you gotta make your way back to the door uh the first level was just that it was go find like five people get out the second level was a lot more difficult it was go find like six people and get out but the six people were like, this one lady wouldn't leave until you found another person. And then the other person was behind a door that you couldn't get through. And then the sixth person, which was bullshit, uh, was like hidden a bunch amongst a bunch of mannequins. And very, very difficult to find. Uh, the game was super interesting, though. I loved the concept. I loved the idea of it. I gave it a thumbs up. There is another game that people watching the stream when I played it told me called The Fireman. Uh, that was Japan only. 
but I guess there's an English ROM patch. Uh, and it's kind of the same concept. So either one of those games, if you wanted to go find them, I think would be great to play. I love the idea of it. It's very unique to everything else I've played on the Super Nintendo thus far. And, and I dug that idea. So the Fireman gets, or the Ignition Factor gets a thumbs up from me. Next up, Full Throttle All American Racing. All American Racing. This game was a disappointment on so many levels. Uh, first off, I didn't expect much from it. I was like, this game, every racing game I've played on Super Nintendo, probably 20 racing games, I think I've given a thumbs up to maybe five of them. For the most part, they're all trash. But this one, when I started it, this looks like Road Rash. And I love Road Rash. One of my favorite all-time racing games. And this looks so much like Road Rash on the Sega Genesis. Um, like, the sprites are good. The scale, the super scaling, whatever you want to call it, it's good. Uh, hard as balls, though. You don't have a punch. You can only kick. And the steering is very, very difficult to control. And I didn't, I didn't hate it because of that. I hated it because of this. So there's two race modes. There's motorcycle racing, and then there's jet skis. And you're going to see when we start this that the jet ski is absolutely awful. It's slow. It's very hard to steer. Um, also, the graphics freak out. Uh, you can see the artifacting there. And I don't know if that's because the ROM wasn't good or if it's just because this game wasn't good. I don't know if that was in the actual game cartridge or not. My problem with... Uh, and this is in motorcycle racing too, but it's less pronounced there. Every time you bump into somebody, you take damage on your jet ski. Every time you touch the edge, it's damage. Every time you touch something in the water, it's damage. And I never once finished a race in the jet ski. Because the other guys bump into you so much. And kind of like F-Zero, there's only like four other racers that matter as far as your place is concerned. But it just populates the track with all these other people who don't matter. You don't gain a spot when you pass them. They're just there to hit you and break your shit. And the controls were so poor it absolutely made me hate it. Like, if it had just been the motorcycle racing game, I could have... I mean, I probably still would have thumbed down it because it's not good enough. But I could have tolerated it. The jet ski portion of this made me absolutely hate my time with it and made it not worth playing at all. Ignore this game. It is garbage, garbage, garbage. Uh, final five on the short view here. Might and Magic 3, Isles of Terra. <sighs> Uh, this is essentially a conversion of like an old PC Might and Magic game. It is the old Corridor RPG, right? So you've got this set of keys on the side that are your actions, your party status on the bottom, a small like third of the window that shows what your character actually sees. It is a grid-based world, so it would behoove you to make a map. And one of my mustache hairs. <laughs> um, it would behoove you to make a map. And one of your characters has the ability to make maps that does map out as you go. But you're very, very squishy. And I died a lot, which kind of sucked. The bigger issue with this game is it's just very, very, very clunky. Like navigating all these menus to pick items and equipment and put them on characters i couldn't find a way to swap items between characters so like when i finished a thing it was like oh you found a cutlass and an armor and a couple of rings and then the leader of the party is the one that gets it all and you can change who the leader of the party is but there's no way for me to swap the stuff from the leader to one of the other players so I'm like, well, I could, I could give this armor to the other character, but it won't let me. And it just felt very frustrating and very slow. And like a lot of RPGs, um, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of grinding to be had, which bothers me. I hate grinding so much because you walk out the gate 
and you're like, hey, there's some goblins. Bam, goblins dead. Hey, there's some goblins. Bam, goblins dead. Hey, there's an orc. Boom, you're toast. They went. They they blew through me in no time flat with no effort whatsoever. I was like, well, that's annoying. Uh, so then it's like you you go and you farm a little goblin, and then you can oh now I can kill a couple of orcs here and there. Um, and then I went into the next thing, and oh there's a skeleton. Boom, skeleton just tore through me. And I'm just like, this is fucking dumb. Uh, so very clunky controls, very clunky uh, inventory system, annoying grinding RPG downhill thumbs down for me don't play if you want a good rpg on a super nintendo you're gonna want to play a final fantasy game and i don't like those either because of the grindiness but at least the menus are navigable you know those were built for the system whereas this was clearly a port from something older that was designed for a mouse also this does have mass compatibility i didn't use a mouse i don't think that would have helped frankly uh like, it might have made navigating the menus a little easier, but it still wouldn't have helped with the just sheer amount of menuing that you have to do in this. Or the, the grinding. And, yeah, it's just where it's at. Thumbs down, Mad Magic 3, Oz of Terra. Uh, if you're a fan of that genre and those set of game, maybe you play it, but not me. So that's four down on this set of five games. Uh, the only thumbs up we get here is for the ignition factor, and that's mostly for being a completely unique idea and concept. There you go. Anyway, thanks for hanging, guys. I appreciate you all uh, sticking with me throughout this journey. Coming, uh, you know, we're into the 109th set of games at this stage. So that puts us like 540 years. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Appreciate you all. We'll have a little one. Peace.